that this is the first time uh, this year that Leader Pelosi is appearing as Speaker Pelosi <laughs> in this room. And the longest shutdown in American history will finally end today. The President has agreed to our request to open the government and then debate border security, which is great news for 800,000 federal workers and millions of Americans who depend on government services. As Democrats have said all along, the solution to this impasse was separate funding for the government and then go over our disagreements from border security. Separate the funding of government from the discussion on border security, and that's what we got. And Democrats in the Senate and in the House were united behind this position throughout the shutdown, and ultimately this agreement endorses our position. It reopens the government without preconditions, gives Democrats and Republicans an opportunity to discuss border security without holding hundreds of thousands of American workers hostage. We expect the continuing resolution to clear the Senate and clear the House this afternoon and be signed by the President today. And before I go on, I think on both of us, but we want to thank all the federal workers from the bottom of our hearts. They've worked so selflessly this past month without pay, showing up to do a job they knew was important, but for which they weren't fairly compensated. The workers showed up despite the callous indifference of the administration, who treated them as hostages, who treated them as pawns, who belittled their financial strain. Our dedicated public servants should never, never have to go through this again. We will do everything we can to make sure they won't have to. And this past month has proven just how vital government services are to the American people, whether it's our food safety, our airports, our national parks, our economy, our national security, and so much else. The American people do not like it when you throw a wrench into the, into the lives of government workers over an unrelated political dispute. Working people throughout America empathized with the federal workers and were aghast at what the President was doing to them. Hopefully now the President has learned his lesson. Now, once the President signs the continuing resolution, we in Congress will roll up our sleeves and try to find some agreement on border security. We don't agree on some of the specifics of border security. Democrats are firmly against the wall. But we agree on many things, such as the need for drug inspection technology, humanitarian aid, strengthening security at our ports of entry. And that bodes well for finding an eventual agreement, the fact that we have so many areas where we can agree. But today, the President will sign the bill to reopen the government along the outlines of what we have proposed. And hopefully, it means a lesson learned for the White House and for many of our Republican colleagues. Shutting down the government over a policy difference is self-defeating. It accomplishes nothing but pain and suffering for the country and incurs an enormous political cost to the party shutting it down. We cannot, cannot ever hold American workers hostage again. Speaker Pelosi. Thank you very much, Mr. Leader, and thank you for your leadership uh, in bringing us to this important resolution now, where shortly uh, the Senate will send over to the House the paper. I came over to, to see the original paper, and we'll get it probably in a half an hour, uh, two resolutions, one to open up government uh, for all of the agencies of government, and one to proceed uh, to conference on the Homeland Security Bill. Uh, we're pleased that we reach an agreement to reopen government now uh, so that we can have a discussion on how uh, to secure our borders. Uh, it is very clear that we all understand the importance of securing our borders, and we have some very good ideas on how to do that, and that will be part of the discussion as we go forward. House Democrats look forward to working in a bipartisan, bicameral way to pass all of the bills to open government as we proceed into the conference uh, discussion. Now I'm an appropriator, 
and I, uh, I was forged in that culture, and I know left to their own devices that the appropriators bicamerally and bipartisanly uh, can come to a conclusion. Uh, again, sometimes it comes to the four principles of the leaders of the House and Senate to, to weigh in, and I think that uh, we will have a very productive time in a short period of time uh, to come to some conclusion. We're grateful inspired by the courage and the determination of America's workers. Uh, they have shown during this crisis something so, such strong character. But nonetheless, they have to pay the bills when they come due, whether it's a rent check, a mor uh, paying their mortgage, their credit card bills, their car payment, the list goes on. Some of them didn't even have gas money because they didn't have cash uh, or, or any more line of uh, uh, credit card ability uh, to, to, to put gas in the car to go to, to work. It's really hard for some in the administration to understand how people live paycheck to paycheck and how marginal some of their existences are. Uh, makes a difference in how they educate their children, how they put food on the table, again, how they pay the rent, <coughs> etc. So we thank them and are so glad uh, that, as the President said earlier, as soon as possible or immediately. So I don't know which is faster, but <laughs> the quickest of the two, uh, they will receive their back pay and the pay that is due uh, today. We're grateful to Democrats on both sides of the Capitol uh, for their unity uh, that was very, very important in these discussions. It's sad, though, that it's taken this long uh, to come to an obvious conclusion. We talked about missed bills and financial uh, security being shaken, sometimes questioning, uh, putting in question the, the uh, credit, uh, how, how p people's credit is viewed. And that's particularly problematic for our veterans, many of whom are in their jobs with security clearances. And a security clearance uh, is uh, affected if your credit rating uh, is diminished. So uh, we are grateful to our veterans who have donned the uniform of our country to protect us and then moved on to the civilian side to continue their public service. And we want them to have all the respect they deserve, as well as our other uh, pub uh, public employees, federal employees who are working so hard to meet the needs of the American people. We value their purpose. We appreciate uh, uh, their diligence in performing their jobs, whether, as the leader said, keeping us safe and in terms of civilian aviation, uh, uh, whether it's the FBI, other, other areas of, of public safety, but also uh, just in so many ways, whether it's food safety and the rest. The list goes on. You're familiar with it. Uh, but we don't want in any way any uh, uh, shutdown of government to diminish the respect that we have for the purpose of our public employees and the excellence of their service. Uh, disagreement in policy should never be a reason to shut down government, really shouldn't, uh, especially, again, for a period of time that has an impact on the paychecks. Uh, and uh, I'm sad it has taken this long. I'm glad that we've come to a conclusion today as to how we go forward. In the, next, uh, in the next three weeks. And again, I salute the uh, minority, the Democratic leader in the Senate, for the work that he did to bring <laughs> this. Because uh, in the House, we passed 10, but sometimes we passed the bill. Uh, working with our leadership, Mr. Hoyer, 10 times he brought bills to the floor uh, to open up government, to open up government. And the most recent one that was presented on the Senate floor yesterday was so simple $12 billion. $12 billion for disaster assistance and open up government for two weeks. The Republicans said no. I think the public weighed in. And I, I quote Lincoln all the time, public sentiment is everything. With it, you can accomplish almost anything. And we thank the public for weighing in so strongly, for paying attention. And I think that will be the success of this conference. Uh, again, as an appropriator, <laughs> I, I participated in many conferences when we used to have them. Uh, uh, this conference that the public awareness is so increased and the public interest in it is so uh, sharpened uh, that they will see what the decisions are that we have to make and help weigh in on those decisions. I thank you again, Mr. Well. Okay. Wait, wait. One at a time. Come on. One at a time, please.
Wait a minute. Are you sure you recognize <coughs> the speaker? The, um, Nancy. <laughs> the president has wanted this law funding for a long time, but it wasn't until Democrats won the House that he really went to the mat for it. How much of all of this do you think is about the new power dynamic and his desire to show you who's really in charge? I don't, I don't get your question. I mean, the point is today we have come to a way uh, to go forward to debate the best ways to protect our border. I don't see this as any power play. I, I see. Has, I'm referring to the tax relief for today and the fact that he held out <coughs> over wall funding. Well, if you're saying that the president held out over wall funding to show who was in <coughs> charge, I think that's quite a, a bad statement to make about any a leader in our country. Uh, but what I do say is let's go forward, get this done. The leader mentioned lessons learned and hope that the people know that we cannot hold our public employees hostage because we have a disagreement. Uh, for how many, 34 days is it now over one month having an impact on their lives? So I don't want to make any characterizations of the president's motivation. You'll have to ask him. Go ahead. Go ahead. Speaker Pelosi, did the president I can't assure the public on anything that the president will do, uh, but I do have to say I'm optimistic. I see every challenge or every crisis as an opportunity, an opportunity to do the right thing for the American people and at the same time make people aware of what the decisions are that we have here, and hopefully that will make everybody uh, come together in a way that is unifying for our country. I can't characterize the president's evaluation of me. I just say one more thing in reference to that. Uh, we suggested, I suggested to Leader McConnell that we use a conference committee format. That conference committee has Democrats and Republicans, House and Senate sitting at a table, has worked very successfully on Homeland Security and everything and all the other bills that haven't been signed over the last several years, even when the Republicans were in charge. And so, I'm very optimistic that the conference committee can come to a good conclusion and we can avoid another shutdown. Go ahead, Cheryl. The State of the Union is not planned now. <laughs> I don't get that. Uh, what I'd said to the President is when the government is open, we will discuss a mutually agreeable date. And I'll look forward to doing that and welcoming the President to the House of Representatives for the State of the Union when we agree on that mutual sure. agreeable right, date. Sure. Um, this morning you were planning to announce a border security uh, vision of, of Democrats, what you want. What is the state of that proposal? And also, can you accept any sort of physical barriers in the border security plan? The uh, work of the uh, conference committee will draw out everyone's uh, view of what is the best way to protect our borders. Our chair of our Appropriations Subcommittee on Homeland Security, Congresswoman Lucille Roybal Allard, uh, is, uh, knows this issue very well. Uh, she is, uh, will go to the table with our best ideas on how to protect our border. The leader referenced some in terms of, of uh, infrastructure that relates to our ports of entry. The President talks about drugs coming into our country. Ninety percent of the drugs come through the ports of entry. They don't come one way or another, as he was describing. They come through our ports of entry. So let us increase the infrastructure where the drugs are coming in. Uh, let us increase, as the leader said, the, imp uh, the technology to scan for that, for drugs, guns, other contraband, and the rest. Uh, let us talk about some of the things we have in common with the President in terms of humanitarian assistance for those coming over. But it, we're not having a conference um, committee right now. Uh, we'll leave it up to our appropriators to come to that. But some of the things we were going to discuss were where we think, uh, where we have evidence-based uh, knowledge about how we uh, best secure our border. Last one. Go ahead. I think he thought no one should ever underestimate the speaker, as Donald Trump has learned. But I also, I, in addition to that, and I think Nancy would be the first, 
our Democrats stayed totally unified. And certainly in the Senate, they made huge, no, you know, many attempts to take some of our Democrats and get them to side with them. And the unity of our two caucuses really worked because I believe the President himself believed and was told by a couple of his advisors, you've written about them, that, oh, just hold out and we'll get the Democrats to crack and join us. In the Senate, more relevant than the House because they have the majority. He was unable to do that. And I think after three weeks, as the toll mounted and it became clear, we helped make it clear to the President, to the public, that the President was the one in charge of the shutdown, that he just, um, he, he knew that it was a lost cause. Brother, Thank you. You want to go? Clear on your, on your position. Are you no longer ruling out any money for the wall? Are you now? Well, uh, wait, wait, wait. Have I not been clear on a wall? Okay. No, I have been very clear on the wall. Yeah, I've been very clear. But let me just go to the previous question and say this and, and associate myself with the remarks of the leader. In our caucus, uh, the beauty of it is the mix. And I always say, when people say to me, oh, you're so good at organizing your caucus. No, I don't unify our caucus. Our values unify us. And I'm sure it's the same in the Senate. And the fact is, is that our diversity is our strength, the differences of, in so many different ways, including differences of opinion. That's our strength. But our unity is our power. And that is what maybe the President underestimated. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Are you open to money for the wall now?